Welcome back guys to another lesson and we are continuing with our more advanced strategies in this session and we are looking at specifically the overnight and waking levels. Now this is a problem for many patients that I speak with where they're either waking up too low or too high um, or they're noticing overnight that there is a problem whether again it's low or high and they don't really know what to do about it. Now usually there are some very specific reasons why this is happening so I just wanted to take a lesson to delve into it because presumably if many of the patients I see in clinic have this problem it's something that lots of you guys will have as well. So if we just look at the board here, um, hopefully you can see it again. So we have the usual graph, but this time we have a slightly different time scale. So this is 6 p.m. in the evening, so around that dinner time region. Um, 12 a.m. overnight, and then 8 a.m., which roughly is going to be people's wake time, give or take. Um, obviously, if you're not on that schedule and you work night shifts or whatever it might be, just shift the scale. It's the principles we're interested in. Now, we have this red line here. This is representing hypo land, okay? So this is below 4 millimoles per litre. So the first cause, well, let's start with hypos, actually. Let's start with the hypos in the first place. So the first cause of hypos that I wanted to talk about is for those people that just tend to run themselves quite tightly. So let's say you might be living somewhere between 5 and 10 millimoles most of the time, which is a great place to be. But obviously, the tighter and the more narrow bandwidth you allow for your glucose levels to run, the more chance you have of hypos. So let's just examine that then. So let's say that you're running along, uh, you have your meal in the evening, you get a little peak, and then you go to bed here. So you're roughing around about, let's say about six millimoles, okay? So you're six millimoles before bed. Now, obviously that's not a million miles away from four. So even just a gradual drop of just two millimoles in this instance, reduction of two millimoles takes you to four. And then by the morning, when you wake up, you may have reduced by say 2.5 millimoles, which is actually enough to push you down to 3.5. And thus just by running too tightly, you've actually fell into the hypo zone because had you gone to bed at eight, you wouldn't have hypoed. And actually a drop of 2.5 millimoles isn't a particularly big drop. But obviously, if you have that narrow bandwidth, it is the difference between a hypo and not a hypo if you just ran yourself a little bit higher. So of course, the fix for this is not going to bed so tightly. So having a little snack before bed, or you could even shave a little bit off your background insulin, say 10%, because although it's only a modest drop, it's still a drop. So if you're finding that you're dropping regularly overnight, even if it's a small drop, it does show us that we might be giving you a little bit too much background insulin and therefore a 10% drop might just be enough to take the edge off. If 10% turns out to be too much, maybe just go 5% and see what happens. So that's the first thing. The second thing for hypos is looking at when the hypo occurs. So again, if you're looking in the morning here, the other thing that can cause this is actually just having too much basal insulin. So let's say actually in this instance, you've gone, you've had your meal and you've gone to bed, say at 15 and then overnight, despite the fact you've taken no rapid insulin, you still ended up in the same place. Now that's actually more like a 13 millimole swing. So that's not good. We don't want big swings of our background insulin, which is something we, I think we discussed about in our long acting video. Um, that's actually a video I borrowed from the actual website that we'd already previously filmed, but just wanted to reiterate it here. So if you're seeing big swings like this overnight, obviously that's not great because imagine if you've gone to bed at 10 millimoles or eight millimoles and had the similar drop, that would be a big hypo um, so it could be quite dangerous. So we don't want to be seeing big drops like this. So if you are seeing um, big um, drops like that overnight, then maybe even going as high as 20, 30% reduction in your background insulin might be a good starting point, um, particularly if you're finding that you're hypoing quite routinely. So that explains some of the morning hypos. Now there is one other cause which just wanted to talk about. So what I often see is people will have their evening meal, they'll take their insulin, and then they'll test about here. 
So they're running about five millimoles, say. They think they're safe before going to bed, but what they don't realize is they're on the downward trajectory. And this might not necessarily even be five millimoles. It could be six, it could be seven, it could be eight. But what they don't realize is they're on the downward curve. So when they actually drop into the hypo territory is in this first part of the evening. So if we just draw this blue line up. So this is the first part. This is the second part of the evening. So we actually are quite fortunate now that we have these glucose technologies like the free cell Libre and the Dexcom, where we can assess the over overnight trend because it plots it for us. And before this, we wouldn't have really known what the cause was. The advice would have been, oh, let's just dial back your background insulin because you've hypered in the morning. Um, therefore, we need to drop it back. Because what typically happens here is you'll go low and then you just remain low all night. But then you used to wake up and test at this point. Realizing you're in a hypo, you say, oh, I'm in a hypo, this keeps happening, so I must need to reduce my background insulin. But actually you can see the, the, the problem was actually the rapid insulin here, which has just kept you in a hypo all night. You may not have picked it up, you might not have been symptomatic, but that's what the cause was as opposed to the background insulin. Sometimes it's a combination of two. You might have the background insulin that pushes you down a little bit, and you've also got that rapid insulin that is driving you low. And obviously if you have too much background on board, your glucose levels are going to want to drop anyway, most of the day. So any additional rapid insulin you add, it just makes it easier to drop into that hypo territory. So hopefully that makes sense so far. So three causes, running too tightly, where even modest drops become a problem, having too much background insulin, where actually big drops will occur, and then assessing what part of the evening or what part of the night is the hypo actually occurring. Because if you are dropping from the rapid insulin, in the first part of the night and it's just keeping you low. The problem isn't the morning waking level, it's actually um, this point here where you're taking too much rapid that's pushing you too low. So three causes of hypos overnight and in the morning. Now let's look at highs. Is that everything? PM, 12 AM, 8 AM. Hypo and uh, high. Five. Okay. Okay, so welcome back. Let's have a look at some, let's try again. All right, so let's look at the highs then. So I've just drawn this out just um, whilst we cut there. So this time, same time frame, 6 p.m., 12 a.m., 8 a.m. Still have a hypo line, but this time we've also added in a high line. So we've set it loosely at around 12 millimoles per litre. Some people would be quite comfortable there. So 12 is technically still hyperglycemia. It's a high blood sugar. I wouldn't be too twitched about it unless you're perpetually running at 12. You know, the odds blip up to, up to 12 isn't going to do you any long-term harm. Um, but we needed to draw the line somewhere and why and where any better than technically hyperglycemia, um, as I don't want to just be making up arbitrary numbers of what I think might be high. So let's just draw the line where technically it is high, a hyper, high glucose level, and then we can go from there. But I appreciate some of your lines might be higher. So one of the other things that might cause this then is actually insufficient basal insulin. So what happens is you go to bed at quite a nice level. So you've had your meal, get it back, ticking along nicely, and then it just gradually ticks up like that. Quite common, usually shows us that there isn't enough background insulin, but there are a couple of other causes that might cause this trend. One of them is you can see this kick up here at about 6 a.m., 5 a.m. Now, your body will release hormones to get you out of bed and start the day. So these are generally stress hormones, things like cortisol, which help to increase your glucose levels. Um, and what they do is not only do they make you release glucose, but they also make you a bit more insulin resistance. So this has a name, it's called the Dawn, I'm not gonna try and spell this bit, but a um, phenomenon, phenom, 
<laughs> Phenom Nainen. Hopefully that's spelt right. But nonetheless, Dawn Phenomenon. So all that is referring to is the hormones you release that make you more insulin resistant and tell your liver to kick out glucose. So that can also cause it. The other thing that might cause it is exactly the same trend, only this time you've overshot the rapid insulin, so you've gone into a hypo. Now, obviously we want you to treat hypos with some quick acting carbohydrate, but at the same time, your body does detect these hypos that might occur. So it will kick into gear and tell your body to release some glucose from the liver. So sometimes what you can see is actually the body corrects it by itself. That's not to say that you should wait and see whether or not your body does that because it can be dangerous if it doesn't overcome the insulin that's in the body. Because obviously the reason the hypos occurred in the first place is there's too much insulin in your system. But it can cause a rebound high. So then again, you've woke up and in this instance, you'll increase your background insulin. Um, which can actually then exacerbate the problem because it's pushing you lower. Particularly if actually the reason you've hypoed in the first place was because of a gradual dip from your background insulin that's then caused a rebound high. I've used a rapid insulin example here, but this can happen also with your basal insulin, or your background insulin. So just something to look out for. If you have access to a um, flash glucose monitor or continuous glucose monitor, just check out whether this pattern's happening. If you haven't, it does mean a finger prick test overnight, I'm afraid. So there's the first three things, insufficient background insulin, dawn phenomenon, and also um, hypos. One other thing that can cause it, and let's just see if I can find a color that we haven't used, blue, green, black. So the other one that might cause it is the effect of food. So let's say you have a very low glycemic index meal. So rather than just this nice curve you see here, what happens is you have a very low glycemic index meal so it's more drawn out like this, and then it starts to rise overnight. So what's happened is, you've taken your rapid insulin, um, let's use red to uh, represent the insulin, we'll just do a dotted line. So your rapid insulin's in, and it lasts four and a half hours, okay? So obviously that's covered the initial rise from the glucose, but then once you get outside the rapid insulin's action, the, your food's still being absorbed because you have a very low glycemic index meal in your system. So actually the food's being absorbed outside the action of your insulin. So you start to see an increase in your glucose levels. Generally, this will also occur probably in the first half of the night actually. So I know I've drawn it out later in the evening, but in reality, it probably will start to increase around here. So it's quite distinct. So again, if you draw a line down and you say first part of the evening, second part, you'll often see this start to occur just as that uh, rapid insulin wears off and the glucose level starts to rise. And that's how we can differentiate that from say a dawn phenomenon that tends to happen at a very distinct point around 5 a.m. in the morning. So again, something to look out for. If you haven't got access to flash glucose technology or a Dexcom, then you're gonna to have to do a finger prick again before bed outside the action of this rapid insulin. So if you've taken your rapid insulin at 6 p.m., you need to be really be doing a blood glucose test around midnight, which might be staying up for some people, but it can just give you that access to, those, to that glucose data to see what's happening. Examples of meals that might do this is things like pizza, um, curries, takeouts, those high fat meals that really take a long time to be absorbed. If you're a pump user, you can offset this by extending your bolus. So rather than set it for the usual bolus administration of 4.5 hours, you can extend it over much longer period, which then helps to combat the, the release of that insulin. If you haven't got access to a pump, there is something you can do as well, where you actually split your rapid insulin dose to help sort this out. So you take half of your rapid insulin at the beginning of the meal, and you take the other half at the end of the meal. So even if you've carb counted it up appropriately, just split the dose, half at the beginning, half at the end, and then what you've done is, you've actually applied um, roughly a nine hour um, release of your rapid insulin because you've set the clock twice, um, If you're not on pump, one thing you can do with your rapid insulin is actually split the dose. So you take half of the insulin at the beginning of the meal and the other half at the end of the meal. So what that will do is actually extend your rapid insulin duration for you. Um, now you shouldn't be at any 
additional risk of the glucose level spiking in between, even though you've only given half the insulin at the beginning of the meal, because it's so slowly absorbed, you're not getting all that carbohydrate entering your system at once. So we're giving appropriate insulin over an appropriate amount of time to help combat the rise. So there you have it guys, that is some things to look out for overnight, causing hypos and hypers. Um, some things I find in practice, happens all the time, maybe you've seen it yourself. So my advice would be go away, check it out, look at your patterns and see if this is occurring and now you know how to fix it. So uh, we'll leave it there and we'll see you at the next video.